Welcome to Dr. Amazon Podcast, the emergency support channel for FBA private label sellers. We invite top Amazon experts to share the most efficient tips and tricks for your businesses. We are trying to deliver only accurate, credible, and relevant information. My name is Vitaly Hizhniak, and I am the CGO of Profit Vale. And let's get started. So today we will go deeper into one of the main topics that we have. The most of Amazon sellers every time faced with a one main problem, keywords. <laughs> how to use keywords correctly, how to use the keywords inside the listings, title, bullets, everywhere inside the BBC. And today uh, I have a special guest, the Troy Johnston, the co-founder of Sellers. Dot tools and today we will have a chance to discuss all these questions and to go deeply into this topic. So welcome, Troy. Great. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Nice to meet you and uh, thank you for joining us today in such like difficult and specific topic that we have because a lot of people right now are speaking about the keywords, yeah, like the general one. So uh, first of all, like on the beginning, I would like to start with uh, introducing yourself. So could you please tell a few words about yourself? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, in terms of Amazon specific, um, when I got started into Amazon FBA was about 2014. Uh, started selling by falling into a course and a program and really learning, failing my way through it. Um, ended up building a brand uh, on the towards the end of 2014. Uh, ran that brand for about two and a half years and that got acquired. Um, at, well, of course, I had plenty of successes, challenges that came along with that. Um, the brand was in the beauty space, so it was really great for me to kind of see uh, what was required in a little bit, a little bit tougher, more saturated space. Uh, but that served me well to kind of have that trial by fire. Um, and once that brand was acquired, I then moved on to consulting for uh, Amazon brands, um, kind of in equally competitive spaces that were looking for what's the edge, what's the latest, what are what are sellers doing to uh, to gain that competitive advantage? Um, had a great experience with that, and then through my network was able to connect with uh, now my my partners on uh, Seller Tools as we aim to kind of develop uh, as sellers uh, take that unique insight and develop tools that we want that give us that same competitive advantage and help automate activities, safeguard our valuable time, high value activities. Um, and that's really what our kind of our, our vision and mission is now uh, with with Seller Tools. Got it. So uh, according like to this story, uh, could you please name like uh, one of the mistakes that you have as the Amazon sellers, uh, just like general one? Uh, because I understand that uh, we like uh, in the same box here because you also have an experience as the Amazon seller, and now you just provide services for the Amazon sellers. So I guess it will be like really useful. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I had a lot of, um, which I think it's always good for sellers to hear and, and know that, you know, many, sell, many other sellers can empathize with. I've had failed products. I've had uh, missed opportunities. I, even though at the time of acquisition, I had a, a fairly large product line, there was a missed opportunity to really broaden and even go deeper with some of my products. So really not taking and realizing the full potential um, and even some of the things I know now in terms of the level of optimization, uh, the level of automation, I ran a very small team, a handful of people running uh, at the time, you know, six, seven, eight figure, or well, it was a, uh, about seven and a half million, I think at the, at the height. Um, so not quite an eight figure brand, um, but we were running a very lean uh, team. Uh, but there was still there was still some meat on the bone, some some opportunity I think on the table with the benefit of hindsight of thinking, okay, how could we have done a better job with optimization and understanding the strategies we know now of you know sales velocity, what impacts uh, ranking more positively? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, it's not stuff I try to beat myself <laughs> up about too much. You know, now, but uh, with the benefit of hindsight, it's like, well, shoot, I could have added more. We've kind of gone deeper here realized more synergy, grown our list, that asset would have been, you know, that much more valuable come time of acquisition. Um, but yeah, e even in the early stages, I had, you know, had stuff piled up in my car from samples that I've ordered from China, you know, old things that I had to just give away. So I had failed products, you know, it, it didn't just come out to where, oh, I picked one product and it was all of a sudden you, you know, you had a seven figure exit. It was, I, I had my, my challenges. I had my failed products. Um, you know, I, I continue to learn. I think you have to have that learner uh, and that beginner mindset 
in our space because things change, but then also the level uh, at which you approach it, you know, there, there's, there's a depth to the understanding of optimization that, um, that really some of the best sellers out there, just, they just have that little edge, that little advantage, that knowledge or that implementation that they do differently um, that helps them to separate from the pack. Yeah, like the big sellers, like they have an advantage in the case of the understanding what the executives should do, like the fundamentals, yeah, what just works for the all these Amazon algorithms uh, and what right now working for them and what they try to like test and implement. And according like to this way of understanding, like the Amazon in general, yeah, uh, the keywords, it's also like one of the fundamentals that, that we should do like on the beginning in correct when and then work in a case of the optimization like each time step by step uh, and you use like the listings the title the bullets like everywhere you use the keywords and uh, let's go deeper into this topic uh, let's speak about like the importance yeah of the keywords and the yeah, importance a- of the keywords research Absolutely. Such a crucial piece of the equation. I think with more, more brands, more sellers coming online, uh, as a matter of fact, keywords are just going to be that much more important for Amazon to really connect um, because they are truly the puzzle pieces of visibility on Amazon. That's how you, I feel like sellers really need to, to view it because uh, Amazon's trying to capture buyer intent. They're trying to deliver relevant products that have um, you know, that, that have the strongest possibility of realizing a conversion in the search results. And again, as, as the portfolio grows, as Amazon grows, the footprint grows across a variety of marketplaces, the, uh, the need to really reinforce what are you doing in a superior fashion with keywords um, on an ongoing basis, because it's also not a one-time thing. You don't just do a one-time optimization and then you're good for the next six months, year or two years. You need to constantly be evaluating how people are arriving at your listings or mm-hmm. your competitors' listings. Right? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Because uh, <laughs> uh, it's like one of the ideas uh, why you should just double check your search term reports every time. Do and uh, double check like your competitors. Do the keywords analysis because the keywords just change. Like every time, you could just double check the keywords that you have like one month before and now. It could be like difference, not so big one, but but still, you should every time work on improvement and uh, uh, how we could do it. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of ways. Search terms reports is a great way for PPC kind of play to play insights where Mm -hmm. if you're already investing in PPC, depending on your objective, whether that's ROI, where you just want a low ACOS or now with the the ROAS uh, as that's that's been adjusted. Or, you know, now with things like brand analytics, Amazon's kind of extending an olive branch and saying, here's a little bit of Amazon data, which gives you greater insight into top performance, you know, top performance conversion share. Um, but it is the source data. It is really powerful data that doesn't require you other than brand registry and some of those other steps. And now, you know, tools like ours, we make that available um, to where you can really rely on the best source data to inform relevancy, new opportunities. Obviously, it changes month over month. Um, and I think the variety of data sources is important as well because we're talking about search term reports, pay to play. We're talking about Amazon data that is extended through brain analytics. We're looking at, um, you know, reverse ASIN searches are really viable for seeing what competitors, uh, what top competitors are ranking for. Obviously, that doesn't tell you where the sales are coming from. That's a, it's a major misnomer, but you can find out at least what other ASINs are ranking for. And then uh, in terms of keywords, capture those keywords. And then again, you could kind of rinse and repeat. You can see how some of these things feed themselves, where if you glean those keywords from a reverse ASIN, you can then run PPC, run your, you know, kind of your pay to play. and then pull from there, your search term reports, it's sort of a flywheel where it, it, it can kind of serve itself. But to your point, that diligence of constantly seeing, hey, where can I incrementally add keywords into my optimization, into my PPC efforts, and have that flywheel be a lot bigger than just a one-time, you know, one-time event. Yeah, I can relate on it. Uh, but uh, in this way, uh, if we will just make some step back and uh, I would like just to understand, for example, when we do the keyword research, yeah, on what exactly metrics uh, should we take like uh, on the consideration? Yeah, how should we just understand is it these keywords is good for me? Like relative, um, in the case of like the relativeness, yeah, of these keywords to our products and should we use it, for example, inside our listings and then maybe uh, inside our PPC like the investment tool. 
Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. I think I think it's not a bad starting place to look at density. Density has very much been popularized now as approach to say, okay, if my ASIN, if I if I am battling for page one and I look at the first top five ASINs and I see, okay, all five of them rank for this keyword. Okay, great. That gives me a density. That lets me know, okay, this this should at minimum should be on my radar. But then obviously I need to be tracking that keyword. I need to be focusing on how I'm ranking for that keyword. But then also as we're thinking about it in terms of tools, we're thinking, okay, that density is a great indicator, but then how can we tie that back into Amazon data? How can we see if brain analytics, is that is that keyword showing up in brain analytics? Well, that helps us know based on density, should we prioritize it? Because is it in brain analytics? And then where is it at in terms of its search frequency rank in brain analytics? Um, so that's a really simple workflow. Um, but as we're thinking about, about tools, one that we're sort of working on right now, we're thinking of a lot of different qu- different ways of taking density and thinking, okay, this this kind of gives us a good indicator, but then what what tells us the priority? And I think what's often lacking when when sellers run through their keyword research is they almost do it irrespective of their ASIN uh, of their of their own product's performance um, because you on need the beginning kind of, on right. the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. So you want to be thinking about that because you know, of course, I would encourage tracking. And keywords. That's kind of a, a bare minimum. You have to know how you're performing, uh, whether you're indexed at all. Um, be thinking about if you're running sponsored ads, are you showing up in Amazon suggested data? So when you start a manual campaign, is, is, is Amazon even saying, hey, we would describe this listing or use this, AC-, you know, that's another really key indicator. Um, and then, yeah, we look at tracking, ranking, um, what we kind of consider success uh, is if you're, you know, if you're ranking based on that density above those, uh, those competitors and doing so on an ongoing basis. Cause obviously that can change, right? Competitor runs a, you know, uh, a launch campaign. They're strategically trying to achieve rank uh, that can vary, but that's where your diligence is. So, you know, is so important. And many people have heard me speak about, you know, I, I beat the drum of ranking reviews, ranking reviews, like what you're doing day in and day out is really focusing on delegating, automating, and then you know, if, if you have to manually spend some time, high value activities and an Amazon business is ranking and reviews. That's really where, you know, you want to be spending some time. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, it's fair enough. And uh, what about like the long tail keywords? Uh, what do you think about it? Just using, for example, inside the listing. Yeah. Uh, how just it could work for you. Yeah. And this is, this is a way, you know, when we used to do this, um, uh, me and one of the other co-founders at Solar Tools, we used to joke about sitting around, you know, opening up a beer and sitting around for, you know, an hour or two running auto suggest across a wide variety of keywords and just trying to see, hey, this, that is an Amazon indicator, right? That gives us some long tail keywords to start playing with. And then you have, you know, different ways of kind of cobbling a few of them together, trying to, to match buyer intent. Um, tools do help with this now um, where, you know, a, a seed a keyword tool, um, something like we have, it's called like last search, really helpful because that's really the spirit of what it does is what I call auto suggest on steroids. It said it takes an input, it, your input is a keyword. And then it says, okay, um, garlic press stainless steel. We want to capture as a, a long tail, but we also want to capture stainless steel garlic press. And so we look at that keyword both ways and make sure that, um, auto, the auto suggest element is very complete. Now, if you're just starting out, you're very green there's absolutely nothing wrong with manually, you know, getting in Amazon, typing in some of your, you know, your top 10, top, uh, you know, top 20 keywords that maybe are a little bit shorter or mid, mid range, uh, and giving you some of those ideas for longer tails, but tools really help for this. And then, uh, of course, you know, PPC is really, really helpful. The search term reports, they, they, they hold a lot of golden nuggets. I think sometimes it's, it can be viewed sort of passively. Um, but if you're really aggressive, there, there are nuggets in there that can let you know, Hey, if I'm, if I'm performing on this, that, that assumes some amount of relevance, right? That, that shows buyer intent and conversion readiness, but then harvesting those keywords, isolating those keywords, driving that exact match performance, and then harvesting from that keyword. So search term isolation, where you're running phrase and broad to find out what else, you know, what else is there room uh, with that C keyword to, uh, to find new keywords. Or search yeah, you, you know, we uh, have launched, like, I, I don't know, like a uh, two months uh, ago, our Zero to Hero uh, software that helps to create all PPC structures, like all the PPC campaigns and with all needed keywords, essence, like negatives. Everything will be created like in 10, 15 minutes uh, and uh, will be uploaded to your account. And uh, here we just get... Uh, 
uh, one of the main questions from our like audience and from our users as how to find the seed keywords yeah because for people it's a really kind of uh, a uh, it could be a really simple but a, on another hand it's so difficult uh, for many sellers to find a really seed keywords five different keywords that could uh, be relative uh, to this product for like 100 percent yeah and uh, maybe you have any ideas uh, in a case how to uh, find the top relevant keywords yeah for your exact product how to do it in the case of like the amazon and all free tools that we have for example yeah i mean i i'm i'm still a big proponent with the density focus of starting with something like a uh, reverse asin um, because then those indicators of both search volume and brand analytics and where where it resides relative to search frequency rank giving you a really solid starting place because the assumption of relevance comes from top competitors and use, you know, use your, uh, you know, your main keyword, your on the nose keyword. We'll take the garlic press example, running that into Amazon, finding three to five top competitors, and then seeing those that all rank, um, for that given keyword prioritized by search volume. And then mm-hmm. ideally brand analytics, brand analytics, even though we have really great search volume, we have historical search volume, brand analytics has informed our search volume at seller tools. So we put it rightfully at the top of the hill because it's it's true Amazon data um, to inform the prioritization. So I think that workflow makes makes a lot of sense. I see people treating R2A as, uh, or R2A, that's our, that's our reverse ASIN tool, or reverse ASIN as a whole, tra- treating it in a very fixed model, but using it as a launching off point and then sort of branching out into these other avenues, I think is where you get a lot more, more power. Um, because that's, that's where sellers have to catch themselves. If they're following the same process kind of that's taught by everybody else and they're doing the same thing. And then they're wondering why they're not, you know, out competing, um, you know, it's kind of in their process, you know, it's, uh, it's how they're approaching some of these really high value activities. Um, but yeah, that could, that can serve as a solid starting place because it checks off that density element. And then you're thinking about relevance and prioritization. So right now we just thanks Amazon that they provide us with a brand analytics and here yeah, we exactly. have. <laughs> I got it because like all your points is uh, just uh, the the main focus that could provide us with a really good information inside the competitive like uh, our our competitors inside the niche and the niche like in general is the brand analytics now and it's like one of the trend tools that we could use and grab some information. If we're like the, on the beginning, if like we are mid sellers, for example, or like experience one, it's like based on the data, it will be absolutely useful for us. Absolutely. And diving into the brand analytics as well, I've been referring to just the search frequency rank, but looking at that conversion share, that can really inform who your true competitors are. If, if you look at that conversion share and it's razor thin, well, that's a competitor that's just skating by winning that keyword. That, that may be somebody who's not as much on your radar as somebody who is converting at a very high level, assuming a high level of relevance. Obviously, they're driving enough volume to be on brand analytics for, uh, you know, being uh, uh, on brand analytics for that given keyword. Um, but dive a little bit deeper into that as well. Um, I would say just so, like I said, as you start monitoring competitors, that would sort of be the second level is you're monitoring keywords closely. You're seeing, you're tracking, you're making sure you're indexed, you're, you're monitoring, you're ranking. But then the next level would be, okay, competitor performance. How, how are things shaping out for them and really validating some of your assumptions as to, well, I think, you know, maybe in the product research phase, I thought this competitor was somebody who I'd have to keep a close eye on, but maybe how they're performing at that keyword, um, isn't, you know, you, you can sort of validate or invalidate that assumption. Yeah, so here's like the the main question that uh, you should be focused not only on your product and competitor's product, but also to understand what keywords they are ranked yeah and uh, the they work for um, what keywords work just for them in the case of like the amazon list like a general tool and then just analyze do you have them or not if you are ranked on them or not or should you use it for example yeah in the case of like the relativeness absolutely yeah yeah i think i think putting keywords uh, for, for the most part for what i see uh, sellers really struggle with putting keywords on the rightful level of importance um, where, yeah, to your point where you're kind of comparing products and, you know, it's, it's kind of a different perception where, um, the, the importance, you know, the importance of keywords really can't be understated. It's, it's something that you need to be vigilant about, especially moving forward. 
Yeah, absolutely. Got it. Uh, so uh, could you please tell me about like uh, what difficulties uh, could face the Amazon sellers when they will start working with the keywords? Um, yeah, let's see. So common, common pitfalls. I think we touched on one of them in terms of the process of sellers really falling prey to maybe learning from whether it's a course or program and running through the same exact flow uh, as let's say another hundred, another thousand and really struggling to gain a competitive advantage. So I think that's really where sellers have to have to understand the strategy and the rationale so that they can bring in their own twist or take. Um, I think that's that's something we see pretty consistently as new sellers either come to us or they've been a part of something else and they expect to see something different with solo tools. And we sort of have to re-educate. We have to kind of bring in, well, have you thought about it this way? Or we do things this way because of this. Um, and, you know, we try to leverage the fact that we're sellers ourselves. This is, you know, we're kind of using our own tools to refine them and make sure that they meet our standards for our own brands. Um, so I think making sure you're defining your competitive advantage, uh, but then also the vigilance. I mean, we've touched on this as well. We see sellers approach keyword research one time when they do product research, which it should show up in that step. I mean, essentially what you're validating in terms of a product is obviously you want a quality product to deliver on an exceptional uh, buying and customer experience. But what you're really doing research on is keywords, is you're validating demand behind that keyword and interest. Um, and so that's really important uh, in that phase, but on a continuous basis as well. So making sure that you are, uh, you're ultimately really vigilant with, with keywords. And then on, the last thing I would say is maybe just ensuring that you're going beyond the obvious. Um, I think sometimes you know, this is where it gets a little bit tricky with, with, with density as well, because we see it trained a lot is that it's, it's a lot of obvious keywords competing against a lot of obvious keywords. And then there's no long tail. There's no how a customer, customer can back into your listing uh, based on stronger buyer intent, um, based on unique optimization pro approaches. If you're consistently testing your listing, um, and then, and then PPC as well which again, as, as there begins to be more ad products and, and Amazon develops more and more PPC, it's, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to be on us as sellers to make sure we kind of match the uh, understanding and sophistication that Amazon's adding as those products get to be more diffuse and require a little bit more management uh, from a seller. Yeah, of course. Absolutely agree with you because right now the Amazon, uh, they just have a trend uh, to understand what keywords you have like inside inside your listing PPC and to understand how it just works your search terms in case of like the relevancy. And uh, it absolutely influences into your conversion rates, like for sure, because it's like one of the main points that you could, uh, that Amazon could track if your uh, product is relevant or not. Yeah. And then just perform you and improve all your data that you have inside. Yeah. Absolutely agree with you. Uh, according like to that, if you could give a one tip uh, to any Amazon seller, uh, which one it would be? Oh man, I feel like in the spirit of our conversation, it, it would be get your hands on brain analytics. <laughs> I think, I think uh, that that's very on the nose, but I think it's, it's, I mean, it's the best data there is. Um, and so to talk about keywords, irrespective of brain analytics is sort of missing the, uh, missing the importance of Amazon data. We've, I've always been a big champion of make sure that the best source data is at least part of the equation. You don't have to do everything with brain analytics, um, but it, it would be, um, I'd be hard pressed to think you could do complete keyword research without having, um, having that data in the picture somewhere. Um, so I definitely encourage that. And then, yeah, continue to think, understand the, the concept of keyword research enough to where you have your unique twist on it. What are you doing differently? Um, even if it's just outworking your competitors, I think that's, you know, that's another, another approach um. to take. You know, Troy, I guess the uh, brand analytics, it will be highlighted like the main motto to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely cool. Uh, okay, and uh, I guess uh, uh, it will be the last question for today. Uh, what is the best way to reach you? Yeah, if the people will just have some open questions or uh, yeah, they, they would like to um, get one hand of support uh, from your side. So yeah, could yeah, this no. Us? Absolutely. So you can reach us and our, our team at hello at seller.tools. That, that would be the best way to uh, reach myself or the team. And then we also have a free Facebook group, FBA Kings. Uh, it's an awesome community where we encourage and try to support uh, kind of sellers along, along their journey. 
exactly. I can't relate on it. It's absolutely awesome. So uh, thank you so much, Troy. Thank you for today uh, providing us with all these tips and uh, tricks in the case of like the keyword research in general. So thank you for, for today's podcast. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. And that is all for today's Dr. Amazon episode. Don't miss our future arrivals with new hot topics. Press the like, leave us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. We will come back to you shortly.